Welcome to What's Eating Harlem. I'm Vanessa Tyler. There is a lot going on in Harlem. Let's get started. Is that your mama in the kitchen? No, it is Chef Swepson with his authentic down-home cooking in Harlem at Boulevard Bistro. A jazz musician may be born with it, but just where do they perfect it? We will show you where this Harlem teen is learning to read, perform, perfect his craft. One look and you know they must live in Harlem. It's a certain style. Check out who our Selena Hill is spotlighting in Harlem style. Your love is what I need like sun needs today. Do you like pizza? Who doesn't? But here in Harlem, making pizza has been raised to an art form. Don't hold back on the garlic. All of that on this edition of What's Eating Harlem. What's Eating Harlem, funded in part by Cove Lounge. Situated in the heart of Harlem, it embodies the spirit and vitality of its community, delivering a unique blend of cool sophistication and urban edge. Also made possible by Chocolat, Harlem's fine dining at its best. Everyone meets at the bar at Chocolat, 120th and 8th, 2223 Frederick Douglass Boulevard, Chocolat Restaurant Lounge. Hungry? You will be. Shrimp and the cheesiest grits ever. One of the popular brunch items on the menu at Boulevard Bistro, right on the corner of 122nd and Malcolm X Boulevard. Well, food is supposed to dance in your mouth, right? And it's supposed to give you a nostalgic feeling. Like when, when you eat something, it's supposed to remind you. Right? It's supposed to be something memorable. And it's supposed to be that, that feeling that you're like, wow, I can't get enough. I'm full, but I just can't get enough. They can't seem to get enough of this Sunday brunch with a menu that makes you want to order and try everything. Crazy. It's great. Between the shrimp and grits are phenomenal. People love it. People love, I have a biscuit sandwich, so I take my biscuit with the soft scrambled eggs, cheddar cheese, and either a choice of the chicken apple sausage or the apple smoked bacon on the sandwich. Then also I have a crab benedict. It's a jumbo lump crab cake with the poached eggs, with the Creole hollandaise sauce, with the, um, a little mixed green salad. That's a, a huge seller. Then the fried chicken and biscuit, people love. Then my blueberry pancakes with the, uh, filled with fresh blueberries top with a fresh blueberry compote with a creme fraiche on top. And those I make with white lily flour also too. Not everything is made from scratch here. Um, the brioche French toast with the bananas. Then I have a, uh, a banana nut, a banana pecan pancake with the maple butter that people just. Chef Swepson can go on and on about his food. Food is his life, and he has been cooking for practically all of his life. So I started cooking very early on, and food was always something that mesmerized me. And I started cooking when I was five. It really started as a baby, really. He would watch his grandma cook. She says that, Carlos, I would put him in the high chair and stick him in the kitchen so he could watch me cook. His authentic lesson in Southern cooking came from his grandmother and his mother, whom he describes as a cross between B. Smith and Martha Stewart. This is his mom's table, not on Thanksgiving, but on a regular dinner night. My mother always, she believed that, that you didn't have to wait for the guests to pull out the good china. She's like, we're worthy of eating on the good china. So the boy cook, burning in the kitchen and serving on fine china. Cooking, I was initially cooking for my parents and then like my my aunts my dad's family they would come in town and i would make i would make omelets and i would make pancakes like that was my early on cooking consider him a cooking prodigy and a battle between cookbooks versus school books 
cookbooks win? Because back then, it was a, a chef named, a French chef called Jacques Poupon, and Julia Childs also would come on PBS. So I used to watch them, and then my mother had all these different cookbooks, The Joy of Cooking. I don't know if you remember the big cookbook, The Joy of Cooking. So she had all these different cookbooks, so I started reading these recipes, and for someone that wasn't brilliant book-wise, right, I got recipes. Like I understood them. Swepson I carried that passion all the way to culinary school. If you don't eat okra, you're not from the South. You're faking. <laughs> he is definitely from the South, from Natchez, right Mississippi. Now, and after a, working in other people's restaurants, salad. his wife saw an available space that turned out to be the perfect spot in Harlem. He says we call Lenox Avenue the Chandelier of Manhattan, right? Because that's what this essentially is, right? This is something different. Like the history is so rich and the people are beautiful. It's just, it's just in, in, incredible. And, and technically for Harlem, like Lenox Avenue is beachfront property. This is beachfront property right here. It doesn't get any better than this. So right now the guys are gonna make uh, one of our big sellers, which is the fried chicken dinner. This night, I would try what generations in his family perfected, mm. the fried chicken. Organic chicken, seasoned, He's dipped in flour, egg flour, and fried in peanut oil in a cast iron skillet. And Chef is bringing out wild caught right. fish for the dish called Mississippi Grouper. The fish is cornmeal crusted, covered in okra, corn, and tomatoes. Check out the chicken, of course with potato salad and collard greens, cooked in smoked turkey. Oh, I nearly forgot. Everyone who steps in Boulevard Bistro gets these biscuits, which must be smothered in this specially made butter topping. And I made my biscuits with white lily flour, and then I have a Steen's cane syrup butter, right? Steen's cane syrup is, a, I get it actually from Louisiana. No one sells it in this area. You can't buy it here. So I have it, I have it FedExed in. And the white lily flour is not sold here either. I have a purveyor that's able to get it for me. These are heaven. Delicious. Everything here, just like Mama used to make, Boulevard, bringing all the memory food we grew up with right back here to Harlem. Because this is American food, which is soul driven, which is part of the American culture. And just when I thought I could not eat another bite, here comes Chef Swepson with dessert, named after his mother and grandmother. Mamie's German chocolate cake, served with coconut almond joy ice cream. I do an apple cobbler, I do a, uh, a banana bread pudding cobbler as well. Boulevard Bistro also serves cheesecakes by Nicole Caldwell. And while he's cooking, his sister Joy mixes. What can be more Southern than sweet tea, but with a twist? Okay, so the drink that I'm gonna make now is a spiked sweet tea, which is our signature drink here at Boulevard Bistro. Um, we make a, a special sweet tea reduction in our kitchen. Um, and that includes um, a black tea, an English breakfast tea, um, a fruit puree, um, sort of whatever's in season. Right now we're using uh, blackberry and cherry fruit puree, um, some cane sugar, um, and, we, and water, of course. And we basically reduce that down, brew it and reduce it into um, a lovely tea syrup reduction. Um, and so we use about an ounce of this syrup in a champagne flute, and then we top that off with Prosecco. You know, we took the classic Southern sweet tea and made it a little bit more elegant and kicked it up a notch. For and him, it is business and personal. His food passion extends to starting a program to teach Harlem kids the art of fine dining and nurturing the next child chef. But this is his promise. You know, Your time at Boulevard Bistro will be a dining like, experience you will like, never forget. Like with the restaurant, like you're creating moments for people, right? Like people, you could, there's 38,000 restaurants in New York, right? Like you could go anywhere and eat, but your mom or your family or your friends are in town and you bring them here. To me, I take that very seriously. Like, and that feeling, that is an overwhelming feeling. Wow. That you chose the Boulevard Bistro to create your moment.
looking at the next great jazz musician who had to start somewhere, and the somewhere is here, the Bloomingdale School of Music. A lot of my friends, they prefer hip hop and jazz like I do, I prefer jazz, you know. But whatever the passion is, if they pursue it, and like, just like I pursue the trumpet. 14-year-old Perrin Tomlin has the passion, and now the Harlem teen is getting the formal music instruction. Well, this is my third instrument. I used to play the cello and the violin. Now I'm onto the trumpet, you know, but I, I, really, I really found a lot of interest in the trumpet. The school, located in a brownstone on 108th Street between Broadway and Riverside, has been teaching young musicians for 50 years. And music allows people who are different from one another, who come from different socioeconomic statuses, from different races, from different ex life experiences to find a common ground. The Bloomingdale School of Music Executive Director Erica Floresca, a musician herself, says the school welcomes all. There is financial help to cover costs. And since many schools cut their music programs, this fills a vital need because what's learned here is bigger than music. Music and, and arts instruction in general, and music specifically, offer an opportunity for students to learn creative thinking skills. They learn about discipline. They learn about setting goals and achieving goals. Um, they learn about um, how to work as a team um, when they're in an ensemble. They learn about listening. They learn about perseverance. Tia Roper and Kevin Farrell are music children, teachers here. Children, they agree uh, learn learning music helps in so many ways. I think just being involved in music in general builds confidence and a lot of the, the things that some of the students of color that I work with are missing or need more of is to just more love of self and that happens a lot when you have a stronger confidence or a stronger love for yourself and you can easily develop that by taking music. And they say the type of music doesn't matter. I would just say stay as open as you can. <laughs> um, don't be, don't feel stifled by any, any kind of music. Um, try to take in as much as you can by as many different kinds of people as you can. Perrin got his musical tastes from home. Mostly, you know, my father and my mother, they, they, they always played music. Music was always being played in like my household. My dad listened to a whole ton of jazz. He loved listening to jazz rags like Duke Ellington and a lot of stuff like that. So I was very, you know, like, like, moved by that. Harlem has always been filled with music and today most of the new hot spots are adding live music for guests to enjoy, which fills everyone at this music school with optimism. Live music is living again. And Harlem is, has such a rich history of that. I mean, I, I'm a jazz fan and a jazz lover and um, part of what I want to do in building the community here at Bloomingdale is those experiences with live musicians. Especially in today's auto-tuned tech world of computer beats, it is refreshing to hear someone who actually plays. I'm Selena Hill, and this is Harlem Style. Today we are with the very eclectic, soulful, and sultry R&B singer S. Navi, who has been rising to the top ever since she moved to Harlem and is now performing all over the world. Let me claim it, I'll rearrange it. Tell me what you need, tell me what you need, tell me what you need. Esnavi is a multifaceted artist who blends a unique form of soul with a modern twist and edge in both her music and her style. But today we're here at Paris Blues to talk about her personal style. Uh, I would say my style is like edgy glam, but it's pretty much random. Um, I dress how I feel, I dress for the occasion. The um, on stage S N V is a little different than the event going S N V and then the day to day S N V. So, what would you say your style, the message that your style conveys? What would you say? I would say um, 
classy. And I always choose that word because um, a lot of people have always said, like, you know, they, they respect the fact that when I go on stage or when I do videos, when I do things, it's not about me over sexualizing myself in my dress. Like I'm not always gonna have on something that's skin tight or showing my body parts because I don't want that to ever outshine my talent. want to express myself that's part of my freedom I think fashion is part of that freedom and, and the way people dress obviously you're sending a message to how you want to be addressed or how you want people to think of you so I think because I do want to make a statement not only with my music but with my presence that my fashion has to be on par with that so Harlem is the most stylish area I believe in New York um, no disrespect to all the other boroughs and uh, places in Manhattan but you know it's, it's a sense of culture here and uh, I, I go outside just on a regular day and I see people like just dressed and I don't find people dressed the way um, that they're dressed in Harlem anywhere else like in Manhattan. So I think I fall into that because I, I consider myself a very stylish individual and my environment here in Harlem is the same. It's a very stylish community. And like when I perform, you're not gonna catch me on stage without like five inch heels and things that are um, make a statement. Day to day or even on stage or events, I'm all about accessories. Like I always have on huge bracelets, bangles, huge rings. Um, I like, you know, earrings, things like that that make a statement. So that's kind of fluid throughout my style, whether I'm on stage or day to day. So one of my favorite videos of yours is Unexpected Love, and you yes. filmed it right here at Paris yes, Blues. Yes, So when we decided to do the video here, we I mean, everything that I write is based off of true stories. So um, I actually met somebody at a place like this where I wouldn't have thought I would have met someone. So the story like panned over very well by being here. And this is like one of those old school spots where you get like that juke joint, neighborhood, family sort of vibe. So if it's unique and it's fabulous, then it must be Harlem style. I'm Selena Hill. This may look like ordinary pizza making, it's actually an entire pizza experience. This is the freshest mozzarella, but there is much more to this brand new Harlem eatery. Just open Neapolitan Express in the up and coming East Harlem, 111th Street between 2nd and 3rd. Just because you're in Harlem, especially East Harlem, that does not preclude anybody from being able to have this type of experience, uh, type of quality of food. Max Crespo is passionate about pizza and every single topping is the best of the best. From the sauce. So I'm gonna tell you our secret recipe for our sauce. And I've, I, I have no problem telling it on camera. We take the best tomatoes, chow tomatoes, and we crush them. And you have a little bit of salt into them, sea salt, and that's it, nothing else. And you don't have to add anything else. The garlic chopped on the spot, and each pizza has such attention to detail. Real old school in a new school world. What we think um, you're seeing a, a return to is that eating what your grandfather ate, eating the type of breads that your grandfather or great-grandfather ate, or the type of meats, stuff that wasn't processed, that wasn't filled with hormones, that wasn't um, super enriched with gluten, which is why you're starting to see so many people with these 
gluten sensitivities. Well, that is why the flour is special too. What we serve is, um, I call it the Ferrari of flour, Caputo flour. It's double zero, unbleached, non-GMO. It allows you to eat a pizza and feel light uh, because it's, 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 it's not processed, it's not enriched with gluten. Those of us who care about um, what we're putting into our bodies, um, we also care about the, the, the world around us. The soul of Neapolitan Express is a love of the environment. It started with his environmentally friendly green trucks. They were all over Lower Manhattan for years, serving hot pizza and emitting less pollution than a traditional food truck. That got the attention of then Mayor Michael Bloomberg and a lot of very positive press. The company will franchise the concept. Yeah. We got really blessed um, because uh, I picked the right fuel and uh, we got the attention to, of, uh, of Boom Pickens and Clean Energy Fuels. It, it's one of the good times where doing the right thing actually works and is mutually beneficial both to the person and to the business owner. And now this new challenge. Again, with the environment in mind here in Harlem, tables are reclaimed and recycled materials are everywhere in this 6,000 square foot facility, which will double as not just a sleek restaurant, but overnight a place to plug in the food trucks. There are solar panels for electricity on the roof, and they will even grow their own basil in a rooftop garden. The centerpiece of this restaurant is this custom made copper oven. Check this out. Our pizzas go in, and in about a minute and a half, they are ready to come out, baked to perfection. Our oven's an electric oven, um, hand-built oven made by Roberto Izzo at Izzo Forni in Italy. Um, it's, it's a work of art. And the result? These delicious Neapolitan pies, a recipe created by a world championship real-life pizziola. By Giulio Adriani, he's the world's greatest pizziola, bar none. And can't eat it all? Not a problem. Their pizza box transforms. The top is perforated and easily tears for use as paper plates. The bottom does double duty. Yeah, I want that to go. Well, what happens is the bottom of the box turns into a to-go container. And in those small little New York City uh, refrigerators, it fits perfect. Perfect, excellent. Talk about food for thought. Neapolitan Express is on a mission to taste good and do good. Leave a smaller footprint, deliver quality food, and bring a whole new food philosophy to Harlem. Harlem is ready for this energy efficient eatery. Environmental pollution has been a problem nationwide in poorer neighborhoods. Time for a breath of fresh air and a new time for Harlem. Max whose roots are in East Harlem, says in his favor are the odds of success. If you bet against Harlem, I think you're gonna lose that bet. I'll take the action, how about that? I'll take the action all day long. time we have for now, but we have much more next time on What's Eating Harlem. I'm Vanessa Tyler. See you uptown. What's Eating Harlem, funded in part by Cove Lounge. Situated in the heart of Harlem, it embodies the spirit and vitality of its community, delivering a unique blend of cool sophistication and urban edge. Also made possible by Chocolat, Harlem's fine dining at its best. Everyone meets at the bar at Chocolat, 120th and 8th, 2223 Frederick Douglass Boulevard, Chocolat Restaurant Lounge. To become a member of What's Eating Harlem, go to www.whatseatingharlem.com and sign up for special events like wine tastings and food tastings. Also, join us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. If you have any ideas for stories about Harlem, send them to info at whatseatingharlem.com.
Thank you.